Alrighty guys, Alexa Sofil Leather. I think I did things a little different uh, on this video. This is part two. I wanna apologize for part one. It was super duper long. Moving forward, they're gonna be a little bit shorter. So as you notice, this video is a little bit shorter. That is because I did the video first and now I'm doing the intro last. this video, we basically bevel and burnish some of the pieces, put a finishing uh, touch on the edges, and actually assemble the shoulder strap, okay? So in this video, we go over uh, assembling the shoulder strap uh, and some nuances with the shoulder strap and assembling the shoulder strap, essentially. That's what we're, that's what we're doing in this video. So uh, something to keep in mind is in the description, there's gonna be um, a whole bunch of resources, uh, leather crafting tips. Just go scroll down, there's a playlist down there, leather crafting tips. Um, and in that leather crafting tips playlist, I go over tools, that's a big one. Um, just a lot of good resources on there. I would definitely check it out if uh, you're looking for an answer on something. But moving forward, whenever we have to, a good rule of thumb for this project specifically, whenever we are going to bevel and burnish and I say, hey, we're gonna bevel and burnish piece H and piece G, that is your indication that if you want it to dye the edges and put a nice black dye on the edge or paint, that is the time to do it. I don't do that in my shop. I like the raw look, um, but that is when I say, hey, we're gonna bevel and burnish this piece or bevel and burnish one side of a piece, that's your indication that if you wanna go ahead and start uh, have a nicer finish on the edge, that's that's the time to do it. Real quick, super important, please let me know um, in the comments below. I need this. What color thread you guys want for this bag? Because that's gonna be coming up in the next couple of videos is the stitching. And I would, I would primer, there's a video I need you to watch. It is how to stitch, how to saddle stitch. That's a really comprehensive video on the way I saddle stitch. Watch that as a primer for the next upcoming videos. Um, but that being said, please, I need to know what color thread. I'll put an overlay of the thread options that I have, which are basically every color in Ritz and Tiger thread. Tell me in the comments below what color thread you want on this bag, all right? And then I'll, I'll make it with whatever I get the most uh, comments on, whatever color. So yeah, without further ado, we're gonna get into the video. All right, thanks, thanks again, God bless you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bevel and burnish all these pieces, okay? Every single small piece we have here. Not any of the panels and not the handle, not the gusset, not the strap, just all these small pieces like this, okay? Let's go ahead and bevel and burnish that as well as the base piece. So I don't have a bevel and burnishing um, video out, so I'm gonna go ahead and bevel and burnish this one with you right now just so you guys could see. Um, if you guys know how to do that already, just go ahead and fast forward. The, the uh, timestamp's gonna be down there so you can fast forward through this. But these are already done, so I'm gonna move this out the way and I'm gonna go over the tools that I use. We're gonna go ahead and bevel burnish this. Like I said, there's a million ways of doing this. I'm gonna show you the way I do it. All right, you need a burnisher, All right? Burnisher. I'm using the number one Weaver Leather um, a beveler, number one. Can you see that? The number one. This, this is what I use. And I know that you could probably use a number two for the nine ounce, but uh, I like the number one, the way that looks. All right. You need some 250 grit sandpaper or 150 grit sandpaper and like 800 grit to 1,000 grit sandpaper. Um, and then this in here, in these jars, I have acrylic resiline in this jar. And I have some of this foam. Now that foam is the magic eraser that you can buy. And I just cut it up. This is a magic eraser. I got the cheap version on Amazon. Um, and I just cut it up because what that does is, what that does is when you apply this to the edges, it doesn't drip. It actually absorbs the fluid, um, the liquid, and it, it prevents it from dripping. So this is really good, actually a good applicator as well 
for dye, um, which I should mention that if you guys want to start, dye, if you guys want to dye the edges, you can go ahead and do that. But uh, I don't, I don't, I don't dye my edges. But this is where you would do that, um, obviously. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take my number one. The first thing I'm going to do actually is take the sandpaper. I don't know if you can notice these hard edges. Let me zoom in here. I don't know if you guys noticed these hard edges here. You see that hard edge there that I'm when I when I punched out that edge there. There's some hard corners there. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this 150 grit and kind of gently get rid of those those hard corners. Um, and that's all I'm doing with the 150. Just to smooth that out a little bit, so it's not so rough and jarring. So, and that's all, that's all we're doing here is getting rid of that sharpness there so it can look clean, you know? And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and run the bevler across. that side there. Run the bottom. My kids are in the background working on the yard. So forgive me for that. All right, so that's done. You're gonna take you some water. This is just water in a jar. You're gonna hit the edge there. And this is glycerin saddle soap. You guys gotta watch that video on tools that I use. Glycerin saddle soap. I'll make a couple of passes. This is a Don Gonzalez technique. You guys should check them out. And then you just run your burnisher until you get the desired result. Okay. Yeah, maybe hit it up with the 1,000 grit now a little bit, or 800 grit, something fine. That still needs a little work there. Wet it. I think you're done with the glycerin saddle soap. You don't need to constantly apply that. That's just to get it going. Let me get the rest of the edges and then I'll show you how to finish it. All right, so that's done. I got the edges nice, to the nice smoothness that I like, nice and burnished. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, apply this acrylic resiline, okay? Little dip. And uh, this is why I like this, this uh, magic eraser because it does not drip. It really absorbs that in there. And it can actually hold a lot of fluid in the actual magic eraser. So that is beveled and burnished. I don't know if you could see. Are we gonna set that down uh, to the side? So this, these, all these pieces here are beveled and burnished, okay? What we're gonna do next is we're gonna assemble the actual strap the shoulder strap. So let's go ahead and get our pieces and let's assemble that. All right, so before we start, I want you to get out piece M, N, O, P, M, N, O, and P. That's, this is M and N, right, the straps. This right here, these two pieces are O, and these two pieces are Q, all right? But before we do this, this is what we need. Uh, before we do this, I wanna talk about making sure that you actually have O and not H. This is O and this is H, all right? Make sure you don't confuse the two. 
H is a shorter of the two. This is for the handle. This is gonna go here later on down the road. So make sure that you're grabbing the right one. I just wanna clarify that because this is where you could get in trouble. Um, make sure you have, uh, make sure you have O, which is a longer one, and not H. So set this to the side. Don't need that. You need O, M and N, the two straps. We're gonna cut that out now. O and P, all right? This is P. The hardware that you're gonna need are the two button head screws, the buckle, and the two trigger snaps. This is what we're gonna do right now is assemble the strap, okay? So like I said, just make sure you got the right piece here, okay? This is crucial. There's another reason why I do this first. We're gonna get the shoulder strap squared away so that we don't mix this up. Take your two uh, strap keeps and we're simply going to apply or attach this button head screw to this side. All right, I think I should zoom in. Yeah, zooming in probably works. What I do is I use Loctite. I use a little drop of Loctite, so let me show you. And you need a flathead screwdriver, all right? Take a little drop of Loctite and just put one little drop. This comes out kind of heavy, so be careful. I use red Loctite because I do not want it to back out. Take your screw, and the screw goes through the flesh side, and the ball comes out the top on the grain side. You do it by hand first. All right? My kids are making noise in the background. And then you tighten that joker. That's another leather term, right, Eli? Yep, it's a good. And that's what it should look like, my yeah. friend. What this is gonna do is gonna loop over on itself and when we assemble it. So go ahead and do the other one. I'm gonna do that now and then we'll continue. All right, so let's go ahead and work on piece M. M like in Mamalo. And we're gonna basically assemble the main strap. So this is what I need you guys to do is, this is something I do, is I always look to see what part of the strap is the strongest and I make that the uh, the part where the buckle's gonna attach to, because I want that strong. You can kind of, this is a very um, arbitrary way of, uh, I guess it's not arbitrary, I'll just be quiet. But you can kind of feel where it's a little stiff and a little more spongy. So I like this piece here for the main bulk. We'll throw this piece out. Now, you guys ought to check out the how to read my blueprints if you want exactly uh, the way I do this. But I'm just gonna show you that this radial, this uh, rail strap, I always say rail strap, this strap is inch and a quarter wide, right? So to find the middle, you obviously set your dividers to half of inch and a quarter, which is five eighths, right? I don't know if you can see that. That's how you find the middle. So this is one thing that I do, um, and uh, a little tip, you guys could fast forward this if you don't find this useful, but if I, mark it, right? That dot there, that indicates, if you look at pattern M, that is a very left, that's my starting point. And I work left to right. But if I just do from the bottom up alone, that might be skewed a little bit. I don't know if you can see that dot. That might be skewed. So I go bottom up and top down. Now, if you notice, it made two dots there. So to me, I have to punch the hole or mark that. The true center of those two dots are right in between those two dots for two reasons. This might not be exactly uh, 5 eighths and this may not exactly be inch and a quarter. So this is a, a, a fail-proof way of making sure you're in the middle of your strap goods. So that's just a little tip. All right, so if you notice the next move over is what am I doing here? Oh yeah, three quarter inch. So now I have to move three quarters this way. And then from this hole to the very next one, it's gonna be indicated on 
your print, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and mark the holes and I'll show you how to punch it out. Alrighty, so this is the beginning. See the two dots? This indicates where I started. That's where I'm gonna cut it off with the round punch. And you can see the dots. Those are all gonna be, well, where is it? Come on, man. That's gonna be where the holes are gonna be at, right? And this is something else I wanted to show you. That last dot is where I'm gonna cut it off with the round punch, all right? So that's how I do all my strap goods. Um, I always mark where it's gonna end, where it starts, and I work, I work linearly left to right or right to left or however the print says. So let's go ahead and punch this off. Since this is an inch and a quarter wide strap, I'm using an inch and a quarter round punch. And I'm simply going to put it right at the end there. We're going to punch that off. And on the other side where I marked the end. All right. I'm just going to mark it and let you see what I'm talking about. I don't know if you can see that. See? See those dots and where I marked it? That's, what I'm, that's why I mark it that way, because I know where I'm going to punch it off. I never guess, you know? Put it there. And now simply, the rest are the holes. All right, so there she goes. Let's work on the next piece, piece N like in Nancy. All right, so I marked my holes for N like in Nancy, and I wanted to go over this part right here. If you look, it says oblong punch, uh, inch and a quarter oblong punch. Uh, and a good rule of thumb is the oblong punch size needs to be the width of your strap. And that's not a hard, fast rule. Uh, it's just somewhere to begin. So I'm gonna use an inch and a quarter oblong punch, but I want you to recognize that on the print, it has an X in the middle, and that is technically the center of the oblong punch. And what I do so that I know what I need to punch is I go ahead and scratch a little line, a horizontal line like that, so I know that that is the oblong punch, because before I have <laughs> used that oblong punch in the wrong area, and that's a disaster. So we're gonna go ahead and punch this all out like I did before. Now when it comes to the oblong punch, sometimes you have some material left over in there and I'd like to get that out so I can look through the bottom of it um, to kind of center it on that dot, just like this. If I left that material in there, I won't be able to see down through the, the tool. So I like to center it and maybe even mark it, push down a little bit so you can eyeball it after with a marking and say, yeah, that looks good to me. Alrighty, we cut out M and N, but a couple things I wanna talk about before we continue assembling the strap is this is the leftovers I was talking about, all right? This is the leftovers from those straps. Now keep in mind, a lot of the other pieces are this width. So what you could do is now at this point, once you make your radial, once you make your, I keep saying radial strap, once you make your shoulder strap and you have this leftover, Moving forward with this scrap, you can, you can make and cut out all of these other pieces because these are the same width, all right? And all you have to do is do it the same way. These are all the same width, all these pieces. Even these thinner ones, these thinner ones with the leftover, you could just take your strap cutting tool and cut it down after you get the, the other pieces out. So that's what I was talking to, uh, what that's what I was talking about in the part one, where this is probably enough to get all that out, uh, to cut out all those other pieces. So that's something to consider. Um, maybe perhaps work on your shoulder strap first and make use of, the, of these, the scrap here. So that's just something to think about. The other thing, the second thing is, this is gonna be the buckle 
It's gonna fold on itself and the buckle's gonna go through here, but look how thick that is. All right, I'm gonna use my handy dandy expensive Skyver. Whatever you guys have, you have to get this thinned down a little bit. If not, it'll be really, really a bear to work with. You can still do it, but uh, I'm gonna skive it essentially from this hole all the way up. I'm just gonna thin it down a little bit. All right, so when I fold it on itself, it's not so uh, crazy. After we do that, we're gonna bevel and burnish this and assemble it and we'll go from there. So let me go ahead and skive this down. I'm not gonna lie, too lazy to move my camera and not show you that it's just my garage, but it is what it is. This is my garage, y'all. And I have to make space and I do have a fridge and water bottles and it looks really unprofessional, but I'm pretty sure you guys are still gonna buy the template because why not? All right, um, this is not a skiving tutorial, but I mean, look how, Look how so easy. All right, I'm gonna bevel and burnish. So I just finished beveling, burnishing the two main straps and I put the finished coat on the edges. Um, but now's a good time while it's drying to tell you and talk to you about fastening um, the uh, straps. So I use number nine brass rivets. Okay, this is how I put everything together. These are probably one of the bigger rivets you can use. A lot of guys use number 12s. A lot of guys use copper rivets. I like the brass number nines, which are the biggest ones. Um, but you can also use Chicago screws or any kind of fastener that, that's, uh, that you prefer. That's up to you. Yeah, I just like, I like the look. I like how strong it is. And uh, so I'm gonna be using that to assemble all this. So I'll get back in about a couple minutes. For you, it'll be instantaneous and we'll assemble the radio strap and I think we'll call it a day. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is the, the hardest part and that is the buckle. All right, you're gonna take your buckle. <laughs> Let me bring this up so you can see it actually. Your buckle and we're gonna weave it through here. I actually have to look at it myself. All right, so those, you're gonna weave it through there and, th and those two holes are gonna line up, real simple but you're gonna incorporate this strap. The strap, um, the um, strap keep. So if you're using Chicago screw, just weave it through there. If you are using a rivet, um, weave it through there. So you're gonna run this through here, all right? Or your screw, whatever. You're gonna come up through the bottom. Run it through the first hole, second hole, and this is how you're gonna fasten it. Just like that, okay? Let me show you. Whether you're using a Chicago screw or anything else, you're gonna run it just like this. And we're simply, I actually put another one on the other hole just to keep it from shifting. Not that I'm gonna hit that in right now, but I, I like to keep it from shifting and keep this true. So let's go ahead and hit this in or screw it in, whatever it is you're gonna be using. Before I start, make sure that buckle is oriented the right way. I see a lot of guys that will do this backwards where the pin is on the opposite side. So just take your time and orient yourself and make sure it's the right way. I know you guys are gonna ask where I get these. These are Douglas rivet setters, Rocky Mountain Douglas rivet setters. These are specific for the number nine brass rivets. Look at my tools playlist. A video and I go over all that. This next hole here is gonna be for the other cord keep. Now make sure, of course this is up to you, that you orient this the right way with this guy here. You want it to be uniform, but like I said, this is up to you. Um, you can do what you want with this. Uh, inversely, not inversely, I guess you could say inversely. You can move this up wherever you want. It's on that print. It's evident now what, what that hole's for. So. Um, put that where you'd like, but I found that right here is the perfect spot. The next hole, you're going to take this piece, which I should be telling you what, what this was, which these pieces are. Piece O. Remember, you had two of those. That's this piece. This is where you take your trigger snap. 
piece O and your trigger snap, all right? One through the top, one through here, all right? Run your trigger snap through there and back on itself. So piece N, like in Nancy, is done. Let's look at that. That's the buckle end of that piece. Now, you might notice that your cord keepers are oriented a little bit towards the middle. Mines are offset a little bit, and that is because I use a clicker um, that is a little bit too big, and I just cut it down. So just keep in mind that the print is accurate. Just my, my clicker, my die for this piece is actually designed for my radial straps and suspenders, and they're a little bit longer. So I just use the existing die and I cut it down a little bit. So that's why mine looks a little offset, which I think looks pretty good anyway. But uh, yeah, that's that. Now, piece M, like in man, all you need, this is the running end here. This is where it goes into the buckle. And this is where the other trigger snap goes. So you're gonna put this together the same way with the other piece O. Is it O? And Yeah, O like in orphan. Piece through there, piece through here. Flip, trigger snap through there. And I already check, I always check the trigger snaps before I rivet this in to make sure it's functional. There she goes. All right, let's show you what she looks like. So she's done. And the way I make my strap, I make it super universal. Um, so right now it's right at the middle hole. And I wanna say that middle hole is right at 43. This middle hole is right at 43. So it can be longer. It can go up to 50 and it can go shorter down to 30, whatever 43 minus seven is, 36. So this is adjustable 36 to 50 inches. This is why I do it that way. So yeah, let me give you my outro. So that's it. Hopefully this video is a little bit shorter than the first video. So yep, we went over beveling and burnishing uh, and we put together the strap. Um, hopefully moving forward, like I said in the intro, that these videos are gonna be closer to this time and we'll just knock out a little bit as we go along. I spit on the floor and I'm not gonna edit it out. All right, with that being said, that's it. Look forward to the next video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, that color thread. Um, God bless you. Thank you very much. Bye.